Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. And we've got a lot to talk about this week. Kel Time previews have begun, and a lot of the cards that they showed last week are already having an impact on existing cards in the secondary market. Plus, there's a whole lot more going on. We'll dig into all of it. Quickly, before we get into the details, though, if you go over to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Keldheim boxes there. In fact, they just restocked on set booster boxes as well as collector booster boxes. If you use the promo code, the set boxes go down to 103.50 and the collector boxes down to 216. And remember, whenever you spend over $100 or if your order just consists of singles, you do get free shipping in the United States. Additionally, when you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin, as we always do, with Standard and your top eight Standard Legal cards that have lost value this week. Number eight is Ketria Triome. This one normalizes down a little this week. It's going down 44 cents to 760, but this is a highly played mana based card in Standard, Pioneer, Modern, and Commander. Number seven is Dryad of the Elysian Grove, down 46 cents to 1317. Not seeing a lot of Standard play, but this does see a whole lot of play in Modern. Eladomri's Toolbox, Samuel the Titan, Simic Ramp shows up a little bit in Legacy 2, and in Commander, of course, this is a very popular card in Lands Builds and more. However, the Lands Builds really got a push recently from the cards in Zendikar Rising as well as Commander Legends. Number 6 is Negate. This is the copy from the list going down 50 cents to 7.99, and some of the cards from the list are finally softening up. You're going to see more later in the video, and it could be because Wizards did announce this week which cards are going to stay on the list and which ones are coming off for the Cal Time season, and Negate is staying on. This is a great standard card. It's in Demir Control, Esper Doom Foretold, Teamer Adventures, and more. Pioneer, you'll find this in Wilderness Reclamation and more there. Also sees a lot of commander play. Number five is Nyx Bloom Ancient. This has been a very popular commander card ever since it was released. It was going up last week. It does retract a little this week, down 53 cents to 1748. Now it is seeing even more play in commander, most notably in your lock of Scorch Thrash builds. Number four is Azusa Lost But Seeking, the copy from Champions of Kamigawa. This goes down 56 cents to 1810, and this one has been soft ever since it was reprinted in Corset 2021. You will find this card in Modern Amulet Titan builds, but this is a very highly played commander card, and again, has been seeing more play recently due to the push land strategies that came out of Zendikar Rising and Commander Legends. And number three is another card that has been seeing increased commander play thanks to Zendikar Rising and Commander Legends. This is Lotus Cobra. The iconic Master's copy goes down 56 cents to 598. The Zendikar copy down 69 cents to 950. Of course, these cards have been soft ever since this was reprinted in Zendikar Rising. Now this does see a little standard play, but in Pioneer you're going to find it much more frequently. It's in four color Omnith and Naya Winota there. Number two is Grim Tutor, the original from Starter 1999. It goes down $1.17 to $127.14 this week as it does continue to lose value. For a while it was stuck at the $170 mark, but over the last few weeks it has come down quite a bit. Now this has been soft ever since it got reprinted in Corset 2021. And stay tuned because that copy of the card is going to come up shortly. It's actually going up a little bit this week. But if you are interested in getting an original copy, keep an eye on this because I do think it's going to lose more value before it finally settles into a price. Now, it doesn't see much standard play, but it is a tutor, so you know it will continue to see play in Commander. Number one is Brazen Borrower. This is the copy from the list. As a matter of fact, this is one of the cards coming off the list soon. This goes down $266 to $30.99, although it is still very highly priced, so I do think it is going to lose more value in the coming weeks and months. Now, with that being said, this is a great card. It sees a lot of play. Demir Rogues, Teamer Ramp, and more in Standard. It sees Pioneer play, Modern play, Legacy play, and it is a great Commander card, too. You're going to find this in the popular Anawan the Rune Thief builds. Also seeing increased play now in Nimrus, Una's Trickster decks, and more. That brings us to the top six Standard Legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number six is Chromatic Orrery. This goes up $0.25 cents to $11, and this has been another popular Commander card since it has come out. And it is seeing a little more play now in Belby Corrupted Observer builds. Number five is that other copy of Grim Tutor I mentioned, the one from Corset 2021. It goes up 25 cents to 1325. 
Number four is Zagoth Triome, another one of these Triomes. This one, though, going up 26 cents to 797. Number three is the Ozolith. This goes up 28 cents to 757. In modern, you'll find this in hardened scales, but the real story behind this card is the fact that it sees a lot of commander play. It's even seen more play recently in Hamza Guardian of Arashian, Lathael Bounteous Dawn, and Jury Master of the Review. But maybe the biggest headline here is that some of the cards from Keltheim look like they could be pushing this a little in the future. Some examples are these three cards right here. Saral Ferelmeter, Showdown of the Skulls, and Youthful Valkyrie. Notice the last card is a high-numbered card. I will point those out as we go through the video today. That means they will not be found in Keltheim Draft Booster Packs. They would appear, though, in other Keltheim products. Number two is Fiery Emancipation. This goes up 31 cents to 11.50, another very popular commander card, and another card that is seeing more play in your lack of Scorch Thrash builds now. And number one, again, is the Great Henge. This goes up 47 cents to 32.90 this week, and this is a big card right now in standard. Grill and Golgari Adventures will play this. Mono Green Food, Teamer Ramp, and much more. And Pioneer, it's in Mono Green Planeswalkers. And of course, this is a big commander card. It's seeing more play in newer builds as well, like Hamza Guardian of Arashian and much more. And like a lot of the cards we're going to see today, this may also play well with some of the Kaldheim cards that have synergies with plus one, plus one counters, especially Sir Ralph Realmeter. All right, that's going to bring us to Pioneer and our top nine Pioneer legal cards that have lost value this week. Number nine, Escape Shift. This is the copy from Corset 2019. It goes down 57 cents this week to 18.99, normalizing after some recent price spikes. You will find this one in Modern Escape Shift, of course, but it is another huge commander card that you're going to see quite frequently in these land-centric decks that are popular right now. Number eight is Liliana, The Last Hope, down 61 cents to 24.73, and this overall is seeing less play now in Pioneer compared to where it was a number of months ago, but it still shows up in some decks like Vampire, Sometimes Salty Delirium. Also, it does get a little legacy in Commander Play, too. Number 7 is Door of Destinies. This is the copy from Magic 2014. It goes down 62 cents to $11. Great Tribal Commander card in popular builds like Edgar Markov. Seeing more play now in Abomination of Lanoir. However, the big story behind this card is, again, how it could tie in with cards coming from Keldheim. As a matter of fact, it looks like, from what we've seen so far, that this could be a Tribal set. There's been a lot of cards previewed that focus in on certain creature types, and these types so far include angels, dwarfs, giants, elves, spirits, berserkers, warriors, and shapeshifters. So if you can find a copy of this card around $10 or so, it might not be a bad pickup right now. Number six is Stomping Ground from Guild Pack, down 71 cents to $17.09. A lot of these original Shocklands are trending down a little bit this week. I think they are still trying to find their price point from the standard rotation, but you know these cards are going to see a lot of play in Pioneer, Modern, and Commander. Number five is another one. It's Hallowed Fountain. This is from Dissension. It goes down 71 cents as well to 21.74. Number four is Rise of the Dark Realms from Magic 2014, and this was reprinted in Jumpstart, but it is a very solid Commander card in a lot of different builds. It goes down 74 cents this week to $15. Number three is the Chain Veil. This is the copy from the list, another one of these cards normalizing. It goes down 75 cents to 24.35. And of course, you will find this in a number of different commander builds, including a Traxa Praetor's Voice. Number two, another Shockland Breeding Pool from Dissension. It goes down $1.08 to $29. And number one is Crucible of Worlds. Fifth Dawn goes down 95 cents this week to $49.95. The 10th edition copy down $3.54 to $49.69. And this is retracting again after some recent increases. This card got really hot when Zendikar Rising came out, then it started to retract a little bit. Commander Legends came out, the card got hot again. Now we're starting to see some more retraction. This is in modern Tron builds, it's also in vintage Golo stacks and more there. But you know it is a highly played Commander card in lands builds and more. And of course recently it has gotten a lot of play there because of all the land-centric builds that have been floating around. That takes us to the top five Pioneer legal cards that have gained value this week. Number five is Archangel Thune from Iconic Masters. Now, this was reprinted in Double Masters, and it did lose some value then. Rebounding a little this week as it goes up 75 cents to 15.75. Very popular commander card. It's seeing more play now in builds like Lisa Shroud of the Dusk, Lathael the Bounteous Dawn, Hamza Guardian of Arashian. And also, like I was saying, it looks like the Angel Tribe is getting some support in Kaldheim. Check out these preview cards here. Now, these are all high number cards, but from left to right, we have Starnheim Aspirant, Valkyrie Harbinger, Cleaving Reaper. That one's also a Berserker. So is this one, Renegade Reaper. And finally, Rampage of the Valkyries. 
Number four is Lotus Field. It goes up 77 cents to 583. Embrace yourself. I hope you're sitting down. This is a card that sees playing Pioneer. This is in Lotus Combo, of course, in Modern. You'll find it in Jeskai Control. Also does see a good amount of Commander play. Number three is Captive Audience. It goes up 78 cents to 340, and this has seen increased Commander play recently in Gen Arcanum Weaver, Blim Comedic Genius, and other new builds. Number two is Twilight Prophet. This has been a very popular card in Commander Edgar Markov builds. Now it is seeing play in some new builds too, like Lisa Shroud of Dusk and Balby Corrupted Observer, for example. This goes up $1.39 this week to $22.55. Number one is Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. This one has been a little turbulent recently, but it does see Pioneer play. It goes up at $1.55 this week to $49.13. You will find this in Pioneer Mono Green Planeswalkers. and Modern, it's in Tron, Legacy Mono Green Cloud Post. And of course, it does see Commander play too, frequently found in Kozilek like the Great Distortion builds. And also some new builds, including decks like Belby Corrupted Observer. And that's going to take us to Modern with your top six modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Now in this section, you are going to see a number of cards from the list coming down in price finally, trying to find a more logical price point. This is Lightning Bolt at number 6, going down $222 to $20.97. Of course, it is a staple in many formats, Modern, Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. Number 5 is Damnation from Planar Chaos. It goes down $223 to $39.94. Now this is being reprinted in the Artist Series 7 McKinnon Secret Layer, which is why it is so soft right now. In Modern, it's in Saltai Uro and more. It's also a highly played board sweep in black for Commander. Number four is a Chroma's Memorial from the list. It goes down 269 to 3199, and this is actually seeing increased Commander play with the partner Commander, Chroma Vision of Ixidor, as well as some other new cards from Commander Legends. Number three is Polluted Delta from Onslaught, the original, going down 273 to 4698. Now, this recently spiked pretty aggressively. Since then, it has been normalizing back down. It was also reprinted not too long ago in Zendikar Rising as an expedition. It does see a lot of play in modern legacy, vintage, and commander like all fetchlands do. Number two is Gemstone Mine, another card from the list trying to find a reasonable price point. This goes down 322 to 997 this week. You'll find this in modern ad nauseum, dredge, and more legacy. It's in dark depths and dredge. Also see some commander play too. And number one is Mycosynth Golem from the list. Every week I say this is going to go down, it's going to go down, and then it just keeps going up. Finally, it goes down 5946 to 1766. Still too expensive, though. Having said that, this is a solid card in Commander Artifact builds, and it has seen increased play recently because of some cards from Commander Legends, Iktekic Salvage Splicer, and Rebecca Architect of Ascension. All right, that brings us to the top six modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number six is Flagstones of Trocare, Ultimate Masters up at $1.22 to 1839, Time Spiral up 227 to 2124. This is in Aladomri's Toolbox decks, which have been very popular, also in Jeskai Control. Get some Legacy and Commander Play 2. Number 5 is Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre from Rise of the Eldrazi, up 249 this week to 4877. And this is in the popular Kozilek the Great Distortion build and Commander many times. Also seeing more play in Belby Corrupted Observer and also some other new builds that came out of Commander Legends. This did get a Command Zone podcast mention this week as well. Number four is Pact of Negation from Future Sight. This was reprinted recently in the list, but this copy still going up 332 this week to 4077. And this does see modern play. You're going to find this in Ad Nauseam, Oops All Spells, and more. Also appears sometimes in Legacy. Additionally, it is getting some increased commander play in Obeka Brute Chronologist builds and some other new decks too. Number three is Lavisa Cold Eyes from Cold Snap up 352 to 474. What's going on with this card? That's a pretty big percentage increase. Well, it is a fairly popular commander, he's playing other big builds like Najila the Blade Blossom, but of course this is truly moving up this week because of Keltime previews. I alluded to it earlier, but it does appear that Tribal is a big deal in this set, especially in this case, Warriors and Berserkers. Now, we already saw a couple Berserkers, which I pointed out when we were talking about Angels, Cleaving Reaper and Renegade Reaper, but check out these cards. These are either Berserkers or Warriors themselves, or else they create Warrior Tokens. The first is Magda Brazen Outlaw, and this of course is going to have big implications when it comes to the Dwarf Tribe too. You're going to see that later in the video. The next three cards are all high number cards. You have Sirtland Flinger, Canopy Technician, and again there's going to be some consequences with some of these previews concerning Elves cards too. You'll see that later. Elven Ambush is another one. And then these last two cards are actually two of the front facing commanders from two of the commander decks for Kaldheim. And they were leaked about a week and a half ago. Now they're officially previewed. 
You have Lathrell Blade of the Elves, could be a very popular elf commander soon, and Renar the Ever Watchful. One quick note about Renar when that was leaked a little while back. The picture was very grainy, so people assumed that the zero there was actually snow, and that's why a lot of people just jumped to the conclusion snow is definitely going to be here. Now, there's still a very good chance snow will be here, but we don't have that proof, not yet. So I just wanted to point that out. Number two is Wrath of God from Portal, up 386 to 1498, recently reprinted in Double Masters, as well as the list. As a matter of fact, the version of the card they use for the list reprinting is this one right here. And because of that, this card softened up for a while. Has a pretty big bounce back week though this week as you can see here as it begins to dry up in the secondary market online. It is a huge commander card, great board sweep in white. And number one is a Boro Palace in the Clouds. This goes up 731 this week to 6187. You're going to find this one in Modern Mill is a control and more. And of course it has seen increased commander play in these land centric commander builds I've been talking about. And that's going to bring us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94 or cards that are just popular among collectors currently. We're going to begin with a card that was banned in Modern. It is Mox Opal from Scars of Meriden. It goes up 295 to 4344. This was reprinted recently in Double Masters, but still this copy is starting to rebound already. In Legacy, you'll find this in Azorius Karn Echoes, The Epic Storm, and more. In Vintage, it's in Paradoxical Outcome. Plus, it is a solid commander card in Urza Lord High Artificer, which is a very popular deck. Also seeing more play now in decks like Arden Intrepid Archaeologist alongside Rograk, Son of Roga. Demonic Tutor, great vintage card, great commander card. The Dual Decks Anthology copy goes up $1.91 to 4188 this week. The Dual Decks Divine vs. Demonic copy up 304 to 3972. Next we have Gilded Drake. This is on the reserve list. It goes up 325 to 24460. You'll find this one in Legacy Esper Vile. Also has seen some increased commander play in new builds like Arami of the Dead Tide. Sarah Sanctum, also on the reserve list, going up $6.99 this week to $196.99. You'll find this one in Legacy Enchantress. Has been seeing more commander play in Gen Arcanum Weaver builds and also some other new decks too. Tropical Island from Revised on the reserve list, up $10.47 this week to $5.49.97. Cabal Ghoul on the reserve list, it goes up $12 to $99.99. This card got a small spotlight in one of Alpha Investments videos this week, which could have brought some attention to it. Mishra's Factory, this is the Antiquities Fall variant. It also goes up $12 to $119.99. Balance Rum Unlimited jumps up $17.43 this week to $67.48. Nebuchadnezzar, this is the one from Legends, going up $20 in a cent this week to $135. And even though you can find a very cheap copy of this if you want to grab the Chronicles one, a lot of collectors are just interested in picking up high-grade copies of old cards even when they're not on the reserve list. Mox Diamond from Stronghold, this one is on the reserve list, but it did get a reprinting in foil and from the Vault Relics before they closed that loophole on the list. This copy though goes up $21.93 this week to $559.46. You're going to find this one in Legacy Lands builds and more. Also does get some commander play, especially in competitive decks. Triskelion from Antiquities, another card that's not on the reserve list, it's been reprinted many times, in fact it is modern legal. This goes up $22.89 to $139.95 this week. Field of Dreams on the reserve list that goes up 2610 to 222. Argivian Archaeologist on the reserve list goes up $42 to 250. Now we're starting to see some bigger jumps at this point in the section, and this is just moving because some higher grade copies were for sale and in some cases actually did sell this week. The same is true for this card here. This is Jazam Jin. This is on the reserve list. It goes up 59766 this week to 2150 cents. And another reserve list card here, it is the Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale. It goes up 6.4014 to 3,749.99. And I haven't really been seeing high grade copies selling for that price point. They've been more around $3,000 or so this week. Although if you had a pack fresh copy, maybe got it graded at a high grade, you probably could get that price for it. I'm just not seeing it happen right now. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlight. A lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. Cocker's Flyle, this goes up a dollar to twenty-one sixty-six. This has always been a solid commander card in like Goto Bandit Warlord builds, for example. But this has seen increased play recently in new builds like a Carry Fearless Voyager and Arden Intrepid Archaeologist, along with various partner commanders. Now, this is another card that could be getting a push from Keltime previews as well. It appears that the Dwarf Tribe also has a equipment slash artifact theme going on to some degree. Let's look at some equipment-centric cards that have already been previewed. First is Halvar God of Battle, which on the other side is Sword of the Realms. Then you have some high number cards here, Armored and Armed, Warchanter Scald, and Bearded Axe. 
Baron Master Wizard. This goes up a dollar one to fifteen sixteen. It is on the reserve list. It sees a little commander play. It can show up sometimes in the popular Omnith Locus of Creation builds. Training Grounds from Rise of the Eldrazi going up a dollar one to forty one dollars. Recently reprinted in the list, but this copy is still going up in value. Sees a lot of commander play. You can find this in Kenrith the Return King builds, for example. Many times this shows up in Sliver builds. Now, we haven't seen any slivers in Keltime yet, but to a sliver player, we've seen the next best thing. Shapeshifters with the changeling ability. Let's see some of those cards. We have Realmwalker and then a couple high number cards, Absorb Identity that ties into this theme, and Gladewalker Ritualist. Cloud Key, this is a good card to have in Joyra, whether like Captain Builds and Commander, and it's in a lot of other builds too. It goes up a dollar or two to twenty nine ninety nine. Empress Galena, this is in a number of different commander builds. Send Triplets is one of the more popular ones. Also recently, it's been in a lot of Sakashima of a Thousand Faces builds with various partner commanders. This goes up a dollar to sixteen ninety four. Temporal Manipulation from Ultimate Masters, this was reprinted recently in the list, going up a dollar five this week to twenty four fifty one. And that's happening with a lot of these cards that got reprinted recently. They are starting to rebound in some cases. This one does see a good amount of commander play in various decks. Elidomri Lord of the Leaves. This is on the reserve list. It goes up at LRO7 to $35.99. This is a fairly popular commander. Also has seen increased play in Abomination of Llanowar builds. But of course, this is moving because of the cards we've seen from Keldheim that are focusing on the Elf Tribe. We've already looked at quite a few of them. Here's a couple more examples we haven't talked about yet. High number cards, Elder Fang Ritualist and Thorn Mantle Striker. Next we have Bribery, the copy from Mercadian Masks. It goes up at dollar oh eight to twenty seven forty nine. Solid commander card and send triplets and more. Necropotence, this is a great vintage and commander card. The copy from Iconic Masters goes up a dollar oh eight this week to twenty nine oh six. City of Solitude on the reserve list up a dollar oh nine to twenty one thirty four. Many times you'll find this in the very popular year lock of Scorch Thrash builds now. Another card moving up because of those year lock of Scorch Thrash builds more than anything. This is Mana Flare. Fifth edition up a dollar oh seven to eleven thirty six. Fourth edition up a dollar ten to nine ninety five. Michiko Kanda Truth Seeker. This sees a little commander play in a few different places. It goes up a dollar ten to twenty seventy one. Felwar Stone, the original copy from the Dark. This is a highly played commander mana rock. It goes up a dollar eleven to fourteen forty five. Sarah Ascendant from Magic twenty eleven. This has seen more commander play now and new builds, including Lisa Shroud of the Dusk. It goes up a dollar eleven as well to fifteen seventy four. Caravac the Merciless. This is the copy from Arch Enemy. It goes up a dollar thirteen to nine sixty one. You'll find this a lot of times in Vile Smasher the Fierce builds and Commander with various partner commanders. Also does see play in some Yurlock of Scorch Thrash builds and more. Sword of Fire and Ice. This is the copy from Double Masters. It goes up a dollar sixteen to forty three oh seven. Has seen increased commander play in a Kiri Fearless Voyager, Wireless Soul of Steel, and Arden Intrepid Archaeologist, along with Rograk, son of Roga. Plus some other new builds that have been floating around out there. In Modern, you'll find this in Death and Taxes, Bant Stoneblade, and more. Legacy, it's in Death and Taxes, and more there too. And of course, this could be getting a push from some of those Keldheim previews that do care about equipment, which we saw earlier. Doubling Season, another Double Masters card. It goes up $1.17 to $41.38. Highly played Commander card all over the place in that format. It's in popular builds like Attracts of Praetor's Voice and much more. Also seeing increased play in new builds like Hamza Guardian of Arashian, for example. But again, like a lot of the cards we're talking about today, this could be getting a push from those Keltime previews. You may have noticed that a lot of the cards we've already talked about either create tokens or give counters. And we've only scratched the surface as to what's actually in the Keldheim set. And let's throw one more in there. Kaya the Inexorable. Bitter Blossom from Ultimate Masters up at $1.23 to $36.99. This has seen increased commander play in Anawan the Rune Thief, the least reverent medium, Ganarcanum Weaver, Tevesh Doom of Fools with various partner commanders new and old. Also, this sees modern play in Orzov Stoneblade, Demir Control, and a little legacy play too. Grey Pact from 10th edition goes up at $1.26 to twenty two twenty seven. This is another card that's been getting more commander play because of new cards, one of which is Negan the Cold Blooded from the Walking Dead Secret Lair. Another is Tevesh Zat, Doom of Fools, again with different partner commanders. This may also go well in some strategies with Sir Rolf Realmeter, which we saw earlier. Linvala, Keeper of Silence, the original from Rise of the Eldrazi, up $1.31 to twenty five ten. This is in the very popular Kali of the Vast builds many times in Commander. Also, this is seeing more play in Lisa Shroud of the Dusk, as well as some other new decks. When it comes to Modern, sometimes you'll find this in the sideboard of Eladomri's Toolbox. Additionally, this is an angel, so it could be getting a push from those angel-centric cards we saw earlier from Keldheim. 
Bloom Tender for Mystery Boosters happens to be an elf, but I think this card is just going up because of what it does. It goes up $1.36 to $28.96 this week. Highly played commander card in numerous builds. Karn Liberated, another card from Double Masters increasing in price up at $1.36 to $29.95. This is in Kozilek the Great Distortion builds and much more in Commander. This has also been in a popular new build, Belby Corrupted Observer, which we've been talking a lot about. When it comes to Modern, you'll find this in Tron there. Shallow Grave up $1.40 to $19.93. This is on the reserve list and has seen a little increased Commander play in some new builds since Commander Legends came out. Scrying Sheets from Cold Snap up $1.43 to $16.97. This does currently see a little Commander play, but this is all about speculation that Snow will come back in Cal time. Now we don't have confirmation of that at time of recording, but the packaging does look very wintry. And if you look at the cards that are being added to the list, Two of them do interact with the snow mechanic. This, though, is one of them. So, yes, this is actually getting a reprint. And beyond that, they do have a lot of cards that have a ice or cold theme to them. So, I guess time will tell. Chance Encounter. This one is seeing more play in the format because of the partner commander, Kark the Thumbless. This goes up $1.43 as well to $16.99. Archfiend of Despair. This does combo with a newer card from Zendikar Rising, Scourge of the Sky Claves. Many times you'll find this in Kali of the Vast builds, which are very popular, also getting additional play in some new decks like Your Lock of Scorched Thrash, Lisa Shroud of Dusk, Belby Corrupted Observer, and more. This goes up $1.43 this week to $25.46. Ball Lightning from the Dark. This has a rebound week after some losses last week. It goes up $1.50 to $26.12. This does see a little commander play in Grevin, Predator, Captain, and more. Skyline Despot. This is getting a push from new Commander Legends Monarch cards. In particular, this is seeing a lot of play in Commander Jared Carthalian True Air decks. This might also end up being good in some strategies with Magda Brazen Outlaw, which we saw earlier. This goes up $1.56 to $11.86. Reflecting Pull from Tempest, the original huge Commander mana base card, also sees modern play and is in control and more. It goes up $1.58 to $27.17. Phyrexian Tower, the original copy from Urza Saga, this was recently reprinted in the list. Sees lots of Commander play in different builds. This one goes up $1.64 to $29.79. Didgeridoo on the reserve list up $1.84 to $22.87. You'll find this one in Commander Sethron Herloon General builds. Bloodforge Battleaxe up $1.87 to $19.46. Another solid Commander card seeing more play in decks like a Carry Fearless Voyager, Wildest Soul of Steel, Arden Intrepid Archaeologist along with Rograk, Son of Roga. Also sees play in some other new builds. And again, most likely getting a push from some of those Keltheim preview cards we saw that care about equipment. Frankenstein's Monster, also up $1.87 to $19.68. This does see a tad bit of commander play, but really has been moving because it is a reserve list card. Reserve list cards in general continue to see activity as concerns grow over buyouts and potential spikes. Cards from the dark in particular have been hot recently, but they are starting to cool down now. Our only Commander Legends card that is moving up at any significant rate, this is Vampiric Tutor, up $2 to $51.99. Great vintage card, great Commander card. Lion's Eye Diamond on the reserve list, up $2 to $348.37. Solid Commander card in a lot of different builds. In Legacy, you'll see this in Doomsday, Karn Echoes, and more. Also does show up in Vintage. Here's another card that sees a lot of Vintage play and a lot of Commander play. It is Mana Vault. Fifth edition, up $1.40 to $49.50. 4th edition up $2 to $47.50. Ultimate Masters up $208 to $78.81. Jester's Cap. This is the copy from Ice Age. It goes up $235 to $966. This does see a little commander play, but for the most part, the reason it has been going up is because high grade copies have been relatively dry in the online marketplace recently. Scroll Rack from Tempest up $236 this week to $62.26. This actually lost a lot of value due to the reprinting in the list as well as the reprinting in Commander Legends. But as you can see, it's already beginning to rebound a little bit. Highly played Commander card in general, but especially good in Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow builds. Also sees a good amount of play now in Hans Ericsson builds. Winding Canyons, this one is on the reserve list. It goes up 245 to 3285. This is getting some additional Commander play in a few builds, like Obeka Brute Chronologist. Replenish, also on the reserve list, up 259 to 9248. Good in enchantment heavy builds in the format. Also getting more play now in Gen Arcanum Weaver decks. Vesuvian Doppelganger from Revised, yet another card on the reserve list up 315 this week to 2286. And this is getting some more commander play because of the partner commander Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Cover of Darkness, this is a great tribal commander card. It's going up 339 to 2759. Currently sees a lot of play in Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow, 
Been seeing more play recently in Anawan the Rune Thief. Also an Admiral Beckett Brass builds because of the new pirates that Commander Legends brought us. But of course, with all the tribal focus we've seen so far from Kel Time, that could be pushing this price too. Yevamaya Hollow, this is on the reserve list. It goes up 340 this week to 69.99. Solid Commander card. Seeing more play now in builds like Hans Ericsson. Not Collector up 398 to 1110. And this one's moving up because of a new secret layer, which is very squirrel centric. It's called We Hope You Like Squirrels. Norwood Priestess, this is getting hard to find in good condition. It goes up 503 this week to 64.99. Now it is an elf, and that could play into it a little bit, but I think this increase is due to the availability more than anything. Dockside Extortionist, this is an extremely popular commander card and combo enabler in the format. It goes up 565 this week to $45. Aside from all the places it already sees play, it's getting additional play now in Obeka Burke Chronologist builds. Also in some of these new Pirates builds that came out of Commander Legends. But if that's not enough for you, it looks like Kaldheim does have a little bit of a treasure token theme going on in there too, at least from what we've seen so far. Earlier we looked at Magda Brazen Outlaw. Here's another card though, Gilded Assault Cart. Eternal Flame from the Dark on the reserve list. And yes, this does see a little Commander play here or there. But again, moving more because it is a reserve list card. This one's jumping. It goes up 686 this week to 1709. Dwarven Recruiter, now this does see some commander play into Paula Pilot Exemplar builds, but of course this is moving because of the Dwarf Tribal support we saw earlier in the video. It goes up 695 this week to 809. Phyrexian Devourer, this one is on the reserve list, it goes up 775 to 1415. And this does see a little commander play, sometimes in like Rayhan, Last of the Abzan builds for example. But there was a thread on an MTG Finance message board last week talking about this card's potential that could have brought some attention to it. Dwarven Blood Boiler, another card you might find in those Depala Pilot Exemplar decks in Commander. But of course, again, that is not why it's moving like this. It goes up 846 this week to 895, again because of many of those Keltime previews we saw earlier in the video. Here's another card that is moving because of Snow Speculation. This is Winter's Night. It goes up 1293 to 1425, and yes, this is on the reserve list. Jester's Mask, if you're wondering where the buyout of the week was, well, here you go. This goes up 2075 to 2499. This is on the reserve list. Sure, it sees a little commander play here or there, but again, this is being targeted because it is a reserve list card. And that's going to take us to the premium spotlight. You know, if you watch these videos, I don't like to spend too much time on the rare promos or foils because if you don't have a lot of sales in any given week for a card, you don't necessarily get the best data. And sometimes that data can be manipulated. As a matter of fact, there's a good amount of that going on right now. Check out the Deserted Temple foil if you don't believe me. But with that being said, I do like to pick out a few cards every week that feel like they're moving mostly naturally with the market. This time I chose four. Three we already talked about in the video. The first is Dwarven Recruiter. The foil copy from Odyssey is up $14.91 this week to $26.47. Lovisa Cold Eyes from Cold Snap. That foil is going up $15.61 to $34.99. Also, keep an eye on the Dual Decks Mind vs. Might foil, which I do think will be going up pretty soon. It hasn't moved all that much yet, though. Now, here's one card that we didn't talk about in the earlier portion of the video because the regular copy wasn't moving all that much. This is Pardic Miner. It is a dwarf, so again, getting pushed by some of those Keldheim previews. This foil from Odyssey is going up $27.65 to $29.99. Finally, we have Dwarven Blood Boiler going up $35.35 to $37.99. Alright, that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. As always, be careful out there, stay safe, and thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.